Hey everybody, this is Paul. So recently somebody asked me a question that I really liked, so I decided to make a video on this. So basically this is the question they asked me. I just changed a couple values here and here because I figure it's probably someone's homework problem and uh, I didn't want to just give away the answer. But basically if you can follow along with this process, you should be able to plug whatever values in here and here that you need and follow the same process and you should be able to find a solution. So basically the question we're going to be looking at is if we have a cylinder and that cylinder has a surface area of 100 square centimeters and uh, its height is four times greater than its radius, then what is the height of the cylinder? So let's go ahead and just kind of draw a cylinder to start off with. So basically we have a circle for the top of the cylinder and then we just got our sides that come down and then on the bottom we just have another circle. So basically our surface area of this cylinder is going to be three different parts. We basically got our top, our bottom, and then everything around the outside. So if we pull off the top we realize that we're just looking at a circle here. And then we can do the same with the bottom. So if we pull off the bottom we once again just have a circle. So these two parts are really identical. They uh, both have the same area, they have the same radius, they have the same perimeter. So everything about these two circles is the same. And then the third part right here, if we kind of think of this as like a soda can, and we think about the soda can like ha has a wrapper around the outside, so let's just kind of take a knife and we'll just cut the wrapper from top to bottom. So we're just slicing this wrapper open now. And so now that we've got this slice in here, we can kind of just peel open this wrapper and pull the wrapper off. And then we're just going to pull it aside and place it over here. And if we kind of flatten it out, we realize that we just have a rectangle once we flatten out that wrapper. So our total surface area consists of three different shapes. We have two circles and we have one rectangle. So let's go ahead and just recall the area of a circle. So I'll put AC for area of circle. So the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius of the circle squared. And we're dealing with two circles. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just write AC for area of circle. But I'm going to do two little dots. And this is going to represent both of our circles together. So the area of both of our circles combined is twice the amount of one circle. So it's 2 times pi times r squared. So one of our circles was pi r squared. So two of our circles is basically 2 times pi r squared. So this is the area of both of our circles put together. So now we just need to look at the area of our rectangle. Well, the area of a rectangle is equal to its base times its height. So the base is basically this side or this side right here. That would be the base, so we'll just put a B there. And then the height is basically just going to be the height of our cylinder here. So we'll put H here. And then this is H right here or right there. So you multiply the base times the height. That gives you the area of our rectangle. So now let's uh, look at this base right here. So the base from here to here or from here to here, however you like to think about it, is really the same thing as starting at this cut right here and then going all the way around the outside of one of these circles and stopping here would be the other side. So basically this distance right here is going to be the same as the distance all the way around one of these circles. So the distance around uh, the outside of a circle or basically the perimeter, we can kind of uh, write that as 2 times pi times r. So this is the formula for the distance around the outside of a circle. And we just uh, discussed that that was the same as our base of this rectangle since it kind of just goes all the way around. That wrapper just wraps around the whole thing. So basically the area of our rectangle is equal to the base, which we've written here, multiplied by the height. So now we also know that the height is four times greater than the radius. So we'll just put h is equal to four times r. The height is equal to four times the radius. And then if we were to divide the left and right hand side by 4, then we also have another relationship. We have h divided by 4 is equal to r. So basically h, the height divided by 4, is equal to the radius. And then one more thing we can pull from that information is we can just square the left and right hand side here. So squaring the left hand side we get h squared over 4 squared, which 4 squared is 16, and that's equal to r squared. So we've got these three different relationships here that we were able to kind of pull from this information from the height being four times greater than the radius. So now that we've got some information here, let's go ahead and solve the problem. So let's go ahead and just kind of think about this now. 
So the total area I'll represent by AT. So that's the total area. So the total area is basically the area of both of our circles. So that's right here. This was the area of both of the circles put together. So it's the area of this plus the area of this. That's AC dot dot. Don't forget the dot dot because this is the area of one circle here. And basically it's that plus the area of our rectangle. So AR. So the total area is equal to the area of both of our circles plus the area of our rectangle. So AT, our total area, is 100 centimeters squared. So we'll just put 100. And 100 is equal to both of our circles. So the area of both of our circles is 2 times pi times r squared. So we'll put 2 times pi times r squared. But r squared, we just said, was equal to h squared over 16. So instead of r squared, we'll put h squared over 16. And then we're going to add that to the area of our rectangle here. So the area of our rectangle is 2 times pi times r times h. So we'll put 2 times pi times r. r is going to be this relationship now. So r is the same thing as h over 4. So we'll just put h and we'll divide this all by 4. So basically we have the 2 times pi times r. 2 times pi and then h over 4 was our r. And then that's also times one more h. So we'll do times h. But then h times h is just simply h squared. So we'll just change that to h squared. So now we've got uh, an algebraic equation to work with here. And uh, so basically what I want to do now is let's just go ahead and factor out an h squared from both of these two terms right here. So basically by factoring out an h squared, we have 100 is equal to h squared multiplied by 2 pi over 16 plus 2 pi over 4. So basically, if you were to basically distribute this h squared back into both of these terms, then you would end up with the result that we have here. So I just basically removed this h squared from both of these two terms. So now what we want to do is we want to add these two together. So we want to get this one as some something over 16 so we can basically add these together. So 2 pi over 4 and we want this to be some number over 16. Well, we can just multiply this by the number 1. And instead of the number 1, I'm just going to do 4 divided by 4 since that equals 1. So anything times the number 1 is equal to itself. So 2 times pi times 4 is equal to 8 pi. And 4 times 4 is equal to 16. So that means that 2 pi over 4 is equal to 8 pi over 16 since this just represents the number 1. So let's go ahead and just replace this right here with 8 pi over 16 now. 8 pi over 16. So we don't need this anymore. So basically now we have 2 pi over 16 plus 8 pi over 16. We have the common denominator of 16, so we just simply add the numerators together. So bringing that up here, we have 100 is equal to h squared times 2 pi over 16 plus 8 pi over 16. So adding the two numerators together, that's just 10 pi. And then this is all over 16. So that's combining that together now. So let's go ahead and just divide the left and right hand side by 10 pi. So dividing the left and right hand side by 10 pi. So we have basically 100 divided by 10 pi. That would be the left hand side. And then we're dividing the right hand side by 10 pi as well. So that just leaves us with h squared over 16. So 100 divided by 10 is just simply 10. So we can just get rid of that and erase a zero here. So now we have 10 pi over 10, oh, sorry, sorry, not 10 pi. 10 divided by pi is equal to h squared over 16. So now we're just going to multiply the left and right hand side by 16. And multiplying the left and right hand side by 16, we get 160 divided by pi is equal to h squared. So now basically we just need to take the square root of both of these. So taking the square root, so that makes h equal to the square root of that. h is equal to the square root of 160 divided by pi. And then what we have is basically 160 can be rewritten as 4 squared times 10. 
So 4 squared is 16. 16 times 10 is 160. So 4 squared times 10 is equal to 160. And we divide by pi and put that under the square root here. So basically now we have uh, the square root of something squared, so we can pull out that uh, the something squared. So this basically we can just pull out the 4 here, since 4 is squared underneath the square root. So then that basically leaves us with h is equal to pulling the 4 out. So that's 4 times the square root of 10 divided by pi. And that is the answer. And you can plug that in on your calculator. I guess I could eh, it'd probably take me too long in this video to plug that in by hand. But anyway, uh, you could plug this in on your... You know, I guess I could do it really quick for you guys in case you guys want to know what this is. So 10 divided by pi. And take the square root of that. And then multiply that by 4. So I'm coming up with this is about equal to... 7.14, something like that. So it's approximately equal to this. So that's about uh, what your height equals. That's an approximation. This is the exact value of what your height needs to be to satisfy this condition that we have up here. So basically, if we have a cylinder and its surface area is 100 centimeters squared, and it has a height that's four times greater than its radius, then its height must be equal to 4 times the square root of 10 divided by pi, which is approximately equal to 7.14. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. Feel free to let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments. And uh, you guys have an excellent day. Uh, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.